but she was taken back to her pimp. To offer some hope, the traffickers suggest to the women that they can work their way to freedom by paying back their purchase price. Death bondage represents the money that a girl is told she has to work off. That amount is easily inflated if the pimp wants. That way the debt never goes away and she continues to work without ever receiving a penny. He said, you'll be paid $500 a month. But the girls told me, he never pays $500 a month. He always finds a reason to fine you. For example, if a client asks you to do something and you refuse, and the client complains to the pimp, he'd charge you for a month or two, and you'd end up working for nothing. If a trafficked woman manages to pay off her so-called debt, her pimp can then simply sell her to someone else. This creates a cycle of debt bondage from which there is almost no escape. One pimp sells her to another, he sells her to a third, this third one to a fourth, and so on. Tanya was sold three times before she realized that she had left home pregnant and was starting to show. Her new owner noticed. My pimp said, you're going to have an abortion. I said that I didn't want to, that I wanted to have the baby. He said if I refused, he'd make my life hell, and I'd end up with a miscarriage anyway. He forced me to have an abortion. Five days later, I was sent to a client. You know, they just stuck a sponge inside me to stop the bleeding and sent me to work. The camera is camera. this button here. Yeah, and try not to touch your shirt because there's a microphone in there yeah. as well. If you're sitting at a table having yes, a please. coffee, make sure the coffee is not in front of you on the table. Okay, okay. Ну хорошо, я значит говорю Мигрос Макдональдс, да? Окей. Я подъеду тебя сразу наберу. I'm on. We're rolling on hidden cameras. Все, ты готов, дорогой. Virel takes a taxi. The crew trails close behind. Maria has set the meeting in a public place, a shopping mall full of tourists and affluent Turks. We follow him inside with a second camera. Hello? Let him burger or what? Shakir, Shakir, Tarek. Bistro. Ah, Bistro. You're the blue one. Okay, we're going to sell you. Maria's come alone. But she's afraid Virel has brought the police. Yeah. 
где тогда мы с Катей вместе в роте, ну там, души сделали. Maria accuses Virel of trying to get Apo and her arrested at the airport a few weeks earlier. She says a Turkish policeman confirmed this. As the conversation continues, Maria lets slip some surprising admissions about Katya. Maria promises to speak to Apo and set up a meeting between the three of them. As he waits for her call, Virel begins to worry that Apo and Maria may simply get rid of the problem by selling Katya to another pimp. Passed on through the sex trafficking network, she could be anywhere in the world within days. These women are being trafficked to the West. In the United States, they figure 20, 25,000 a year. But Europe is the major destination. Germany, upwards of 80,000, 40, 50,000. In the Netherlands, Spain and Italy and Turkey. All of these countries are getting trafficked women. We have laws in every country on the planet that say you can't abduct people, you can't kidnap, you can't uh, force them into prostitution, you can't assault them. The laws are there, but they're not being enforced. A day has passed, and Virel still hasn't heard from Maria or Apo. No answer. Most trafficking victims have no way out. A few escape, and some are let go when they're of no more value. But many get caught up in police raids, like this one in Antalya. What seems at first like a rescue will actually become the beginning of a new ordeal. When the cops find them, they deport them. The police just simply bring them to the immigration authorities and they are deported. They're re-victimized yet again by the system. In most countries, trafficked women are treated as illegal immigrants with no access to the justice system. And the traffickers and pimps are rarely pursued. There is no witness protection for them. Traffickers often know that they have children and use that as a threat against them. So most often the girls are not willing to testify because they're scared. Oksana was caught in a police raid and deported back to her hometown in Ukraine. In her eight months in captivity, she was able only once to attempt escape. I was desperately trying to think of some way to get out. I wanted to go to the authorities, but I couldn't. I called home. She was saying, Mother, I can't take it anymore. Please go to the police. Maybe they can rescue me. I went to our police and they said, didn't she know what she was going for? 
Meaning, she knew what she was getting into, and we don't deal with prostitutes. 